I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California, and we're having our monthly tech meet here today, and we're going to be looking at a 1967 Silver Shadow block and talking about the cylinders and the crankshaft and all that kind of stuff. So, back to the NIMP. It's not standard practice. I think the most you can machine ahead is 25,000, right. and it's junk. It, and right. Rich and I was talking about that earlier. Well, he, he, I think he's asking about the block. Yeah, the you block. mean the block? Yeah. Ooh. No. First of all, you have to pull all these studs. Right. Yeah. And if you can pull half of the studs without damaging the block, you're lucky. And, and the danger not, is not so much the block, but when you go to pull one of these and they snap way down here, these center two, they go all the way down to them way down in, into here. So they're deep, and there's, a, there's an opening all the way around them that fills up with coolant. And chances are you're going to, and you break one of these about two inches down, lock time. The nip, let's, let's see if this one will slide in nicely. Yeah. I love that. That's the way it's supposed to happen. The nip is how high this is above there. Correct. Now, say it's incorrect. How do you fix that? Or it, it well, here's the process. You take your new sleeve, okay, and then you take your depth gauge, and you got to, it takes practice to get this in the right place, but you press it flat against this cast iron and turn this in until it hits the block. So what I've got on this is it's sticking up Eight and a half thousandths. So, so you five and a half thousandths. right. I, I have a lathe. I used to send them out, and then they'd be hostage for weeks. Right? It's not good for us. So I ended up buying a lathe just to do these, and then I've used it for a lot of other stuff. So there's two ways of doing this. You can put this in the lathe and cut the top. Put this in the lathe and cut the back. You're only going to move this up and down a little bit, and there's a lot, a big old gland here for it to seal on. So you, I don't worry because five thousandths, it's not going to move enough to go past the O-ring, right? Uh, and so I found it's much easier to set one of these up square with this sand and cut way down here instead of out here because it, it's hard to get them square in a lathe. Uh, and so that's that's what I do. So now you know that this is two to three thousandths. God, that's nice. Sometimes they're a real <laughs> box. It's all, and I'll, I'll put this in the lay. I'm not going to do it now because it's too much pressure with all these eyeballs watching. Um, the jaws on the uh, lathe, I've finally figured out what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some thin aluminum on them on each on three jaws so it doesn't damage. Because if you damage this part, especially up near the top, that's where the rings run. Down here, they don't run. The skirt never goes, it might go past this, but not much. Uh, so it's probably a safer place to grab it from the inside. But I like the way it cuts much easier here. And <laughs> I, I have a problem transposing, and, and my gazintas and takeaways are a little off sometimes. So <laughs> I usually want to take one thousandths off, maybe. And then then check it, because, you know, if you go too deep, that's no good anymore. Yeah, but I, 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 I it's like, we'll do a, a number six razor and then a number five to see how that looks. Instead of, let's just do a number five, oh, f that's too much, you know, that kind of stuff. So, any questions to this point? The weep hole sits right in here. So you've got two O-rings for the coolant passage, and then the, the lower O-ring for the the, uh, the crankcase. So what happens to the lower O-ring is they, they will dry up and crack, and that's why you get the oil leak out. Okay? Uh, I don't, I've never seen a coolant one dry up and crack, because typically they're submerged. They get corrosion on them. That's a different thing. Uh, 
Oh, I gotta look it up. What? Well, the O-rings, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, that head gasket, the ring for the head gasket sits right on the cast iron here. And when you torque it, it just pushes it and holds it tight. It's not gonna. Right. It's a wet sleeve, so it's not a pressed dry sleeve. Jaguar, they really fucked up, I think, on some engines. Uh, like the V12 engine, they have a wet sleeve thing, too. But the shoulder that holds the cylinder is at the bottom. And that's where it's supposed to be sealed, way down here. And, and they make special tools to hold all those in place when you pull the heads. Because if you turn the crankshaft, the sleeves will move up. And then you could leak coolant into the block. So I don't know what the clearance is here. You could probably find it quicker than me. Absolutely. Regular. Uh, I grease them up good. With uh, O ring lube? Like uh, you can use castle. rubber grease. You can, yeah. I, I, axle grease, I've siliconed them, whatever, you know, because when you put the O rings in, they don't, it doesn't drop right in like it did. Oh, no. Right, because you, you got to push it. Um, but yeah, it's. <laughs> he's a thinking man. He's He's been down the road before on shit like that, I can yeah. tell. Tony's a mechanic, too. So, yeah, you hope they don't roll. And you hope they seal. And you won't know until you get it all together, right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way from this to being in a car running. Yeah. A long way. A long way. So let's let's talk about the, this camshaft. Just so you know, this this is a shadow camshaft. So. It's got two extra lobes. You got two for each cylinder, intake and exhaust, and then you got the two brake pumps. That's this one and this one. Okay. Um, and it's got this funny color coating on. This has been reground. Now the danger with reground camshafts is that okay, what usually wears on a camshaft is a high point on the lobe. Okay. So when that wears down. They can't just grind a new profile because it won't be high enough to open the valve enough. So what they do is they grind the backside also. So what that does is moves the lifter down, which moves the push rod down, which moves the rocker back, which gives you more clearance potentially at the valve. The rocker pushes the valve. But on the good side is, is when they get to the point where you gotta do this, you usually have to grind the valves on the cylinder heads, which means the seat that the valve closes on gets ground a bit, so it moves the valve up a little bit. Hopefully, and also the face of the valve, you grind that, that moves it up a little bit more, and hopefully the stem doesn't need much. Um, so they can get reground to the point to where they're no good. Or you have to buy longer push rods. That's another thing. These are hydraulic lifters, so you've got, a, I think, 65 thousandths working room with a hydraulic lifter. To where they're made to take up 65 thousandths clearance through high oil pressure. <coughs> the lifters. Oh, they're not in the car. Uh, this car is going to get a, a real rear main seal upgrade. This plate goes on the back. Typically, on this year model, they've got they don't have a, a regular seal with a lip. What they've got is just they call it an archidemy screw, which is just a groove spiral cut into this housing and it's designed so that I forget if it, I think it pulls it in when the crankshaft is turning air pressure pulls in through that thread and keeps the oil in it's the same on the front they do the same thing on the front there is no seal until 1979 so I stole this off another engine I figured I'd make sure that's still 